All right, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the law of science, and I'm gonna show you where it comes from. Now, everything up to this point that we've done has used right triangle trig. So you had a right triangle, you had a hypotenuse, the opposite side, the adjacent side, and some kind of a reference angle. Law of signs allows you to find missing information in non-right triangles. There's also law of cosines, and you're going to use them different ways depending on what information you're given. So what I'm going to do in this part of the video is I'm going to talk through where law of signs comes from. So you're going to start with any triangle. We're going to call this A, B, and C. And opposite to angle A is going to be side A. So this is little a. Opposite to angle B is going to be little b. And then opposite to angle C is side C, and you have a little c, little c there, okay? Um, that's just notation. It's oftentimes used with law of sines and law of cosines. So whatever your angle measure is, it's with a capital letter, and then the side is notated with a little letter. Uh, so you know that these two uh, are across from each other or opposite. Now, what I want you to do in this triangle is from angle C, we are going to drop in an altitude. Now, an altitude is going to hit the other side of the triangle at a perpendicular, uh, it's perpendicular to the other side, so those are two 90 degree angles. And for giggles, I'm gonna call that altitude H, height would be a good way to describe that. So that's gonna be the height of our triangle. Now, if I just look at this triangle on the left, and I want to figure out this value of h, all right? So I'm gonna set up an equation that could do that for me. And what I do know is I know angle A over here and then I know H is opposite and B is my hypotenuse to that triangle on the left side. So that would give me sine of A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So now if I solve for H, so H would equal B times the sine of A. All right, now I don't know H, B, or angle A. This was just to kind of figure out some information. Now I'm gonna switch and I want to take a look at what happens with the triangle on the right side. And again, I'm still trying to figure out what that side H is. So in this case, I can use angle B as my reference, H is opposite and A is the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle B is equal to H over A. And if I solve for H, H is equal to, give me one second there to get the pieces in the right places. So A sine B. Now, H is the same length, whether I'm dealing with the triangle on the left or the triangle on the right. So H is the same thing. So these two H values are equivalent, which means this uh, little expression here, B times sine of A, is also equal to A sine of B. So if I go down here and I combine those two pieces together into a single equation, so B sine of A equals A sine B. Now this looks a little bit weird, but we can actually resolve this and turn it, it's an equation right now, but if we turn it into a ratio, um, we can actually set up sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. Now, how did I just get that? Basic idea here is you take your two fractions and divide by A and B. So in the first fraction, your Bs will cancel out, so sine of A over A. In the second fraction, the As will cancel, sine of B over B. Now, you could do something similar with a different triangle setup and eventually figure out that the other part of this is sine C over C is also equal to um, the other two fractions here. This is, if you look up law of sines, what you're probably gonna see. You might, depending on where you're looking, also see A over sine of A is equal to B over sine B 
is equal to C over sine C. Either one of these is totally fine. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I will almost always use the first set where the, tri uh, the trig ratios are on top divided by the side lengths. So this is where law of sines comes from. Now, what we're gonna do is actually put it into practice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up to the top. What I've been working on is actually just the bottom of your worksheet today. All right. Now, for each one of these problems on this page, you are going to draw your own triangle. All of the triangles on here are going to be triangle ABC, like the picture I drew earlier, okay? And no, I do not need you to draw these to scale at all. If you're in Notability, Notability will snap a triangle eventually, all right? So you can obviously use that and just label the three, sorry about that, label the three angles wherever you want to. Um, so for me, I tend, doesn't matter, but mine tend to look like ABC that way. So now I'm going to take the information from the problem and fill it into the picture. Okay, so I know the measure of angle B is 18 degrees. So there's 18 degrees. Now it says little a is equal to 8. So I'm going to find angle A, go opposite to that and fill in that side as 8. This is eight, little b is seven. So I'm gonna find angle b, go opposite to that. This is seven, and I want to know the measure of angle a. That's my unknown. So I have an unknown angle with its opposite side, a known angle with its opposite side. So I 100% can use law of sines on this. So the setup is going to be sine of A, so that's my angle A, over its opposite side. So eight is equal to the sine of 18, that's angle B, over its opposite side, seven. And I want to solve for this part of the problem. So if that's what I'm trying to solve for, I'll highlight it in green, there we go. Um, if that's what I'm trying to solve for, I'm actually gonna multiply both sides by eight. So the sine of A is equal to 8 sine of 18 over 7. And then you can either put this in your calculator right now and then hold it in your calculator, or I'm actually going to do the calculator at one step at the very end. So to get A all by itself, I'm going to get rid of sine here by doing the inverse sine of both sides. So if I do the inverse sine of both sides, those two are gonna cancel. Sine and inverse sine cancel. Gives me A is equal to the inverse sine of eight sine of 18 over seven. And now this is the expression I'm gonna put in my calculator. Now I'm gonna pop up, I think I have Desmos, I do have Desmos ready. And whether you work in Desmos, Calculate 84, I'm just taking a moment to clear out a bunch of the stuff I had in Desmos. Um, whether you work in either one of them, it is totally, uh, either one of them will get you the right answers. One reminder with Desmos, make sure you hit the little wrench button and check to make sure that you are in degrees, all right? If degrees is not highlighted, you need to get it to be highlighted or you're gonna get some really wacky answers. Okay, so I'm gonna go into functions. I'm going to select inverse sine. Now I'm gonna create a fraction here to accommodate this mess. So I'm just gonna hit the fraction, uh, division key, which creates a fraction. So eight, go back into functions, but this time I want sine of 18. Close that parentheses, and then I'm just gonna use the cursor and touch into this um, dark gray spot in the bottom to fill in my denominator over seven, and that gives me the answer of the measure of angle A is equal to 20.6, actually, hold on one second, uh, round to the nearest 10th, so <laughs> follow the rounding directions. All right, so 20.7 degrees, but I'm not done. <laughs> All right, so law of sines has what's called an ambiguous case where this triangle 
might actually look two different ways. And so it's weird, but the triangle that we've just found has a very um, obtuse angle up here at angle C, and this would be a really tiny 20 degree angle. The other option, and I'm gonna see if I can draw this decently. Okay, so here's AB. We know this is an 18 degree angle here, that's eight, and there's C. Now, what we found is the angle that comes over here, and then this one is 20 degrees. There is another possibility. Because angle C could be pretty much anything we want it to be, we could actually swing this side of the triangle in, and there would be another triangle right here that would still have this eight, this side would still be seven. This It's basically a weird, ambiguous case. We don't know which triangle we're dealing with. So what you need to do at the end of your problem, take the answer you got, subtract it from 180. In this case, what is that? 100 and something. 180 minus 20 points, whoops, 20.7. So you get 159.3 degrees. Now, this might be an angle that works. The way you're gonna test this is add this answer to the given angle measure. Okay, so just add it in, so plus 18. If the answer you get, and I'm working over here in um, Desmos here. If this answer is less, anything less than 180, you have the ambiguous case. All right. So in this case, both answers here are going to work. So measure of angle A is equal to 20.7 or measure angle A is equal to 159.3 degrees. So basically you're trying to figure out if this angle could be the acute angle Awesome, that's great. Or it's possible that you might have this obtuse angle, which in this case is 159.3 degrees. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave Desmos up and running as I go into my next question, okay? And we'll see, maybe we have the ambiguous case, maybe we don't, maybe we're trying to find an angle, maybe a side. Law of signs works for a lot of things. So I'm gonna slide over to number two. So first thing I'm gonna do is draw myself a triangle. Again, don't worry about trying to make it accurate in terms of um, uh, drawn to scale, that's not important. What is important is that you have the right pieces in the right places, okay? So for problem number two, I know the measure of angle A is 68 degrees. I know little c is 35. So, and you notice this is little c, this is big C. Little c represents the side opposite of big C. So here's big C, side opposite is 35. So I'm gonna label that. Angle A is 34. And I want to know the measure of angle C. So this is absolutely law of science. What I look for is I have a missing angle opposite to a side I know, uh, a known side opposite to a known, or a known angle opposite to a known side, okay? So that's kind of what I look for in those problems. Uh, you could also look for that you have um, angle side side, if you remember your uh, geometry kind of definitions there. So setting this one up would be sine of C over 35 is equal to sine of 68 over 34. I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply here. Well, actually I'm gonna multiply by this denominator to get sine C by itself. So the sine of C is equal to 35 sine of 68 over 34. Again, you could put this part, uh, this fraction in your calculator and then do the inverse sign. I'm gonna choose to do it all at once because, well, I can make Desmos do that for me. So the inverse sign, 35 sine 68 over 34. And this is the mess I'm gonna put in my calculator. 
So into functions, inverse sine, I'm going to make a fraction, 35 sine 68, close that set of parentheses into the gray box at the bottom, denominator is 34. So C is, uh, actually I'm going to go back for just a second, this is the measure of angle C, I'm just using the proper uh, geometry, geometry notation there. So the measure of angle C is 72.6 degrees. Now I want to test to see if I have the ambiguous case. And it's an easy test, but you have to remember to do it. So take 180 degrees minus the answer you just got. Okay, that's possibly your other answer. So on to, let's see, 180 minus 72.6. My other answer might be 107.4 degrees. The way you're going to test and know if this is actually a possibility is to add in the given angle. So I'm still in Desmos, so I'm just going to hit plus 68. Okay, now that I know that this answer is less than 180 degrees, that means that there could be a third angle that makes it 180. I know that the measure of angle C could also be 107.4 degrees. Okay, so this is the ambiguous case, meaning we don't know if we had, well, in this case, we actually do know now, we had two different possible triangles that had this angle of 68 with this side and this side given. Um, basically, what would happen is this side CB would spin in closer to angle A and create an obtuse angle here for C, or the one we found at first was um, angle C was the acute angle of 72.6 degrees. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to number three. Okay, starting off the same way I've started off the last few problems, draw yourself a pretty picture. All right, so A, B, C. All right, fill in what you know. We know angle A is 89 degrees. We know little c is 28. Little a is 29, and we're supposed to find the measure of angle c. Okay, so same setup that we've been doing. We're going to do the sine of C over 28 is equal to the sine of 89 over 29. Uh, multiply by 28 here to get sine of C by itself. So sine of C equals 20. That's a horrible 20. Hold on a second. There we go. 28 sine of 89 over 29. So C is equal to the inverse sine of that whole fractional mess. Okay, so into my calculator it's gonna go. So inverse sine, make a fraction 28, get back into sine, 89, and then 29 in my denominator. Okay, so I am given the measure of angle C is equal to 74.9 degrees. But I want to check for that ambiguous case. So I'm going to take my answer, take 180 degrees minus that answer that I just got. So 180 minus 74.9 Maybe my other angle is 105, whoops, put the decimal in the wrong place. There we go. Maybe my other angle is 105.1 degrees, but I'm gonna test by adding in 89 because that's the angle that was given to me. So plus 89, this is 194 degrees. That's only two angles of the triangle, which means that's not possible. You can't have a triangle at least not in our system, that uses a negative angle measure. So that's not going to be correct. So this particular problem does not, this is not the ambiguous case. This triangle is the only one that exists, and this is the only possible answer we're going to get for problem number three. 
All right, I'm gonna do one more question, which is problem number four, and then I'm gonna cut the video. I will put up the other answers into the key so you'll be able to see them and take a look. Sometimes you get these ambiguous cases, sometimes you don't. Um, and also how to solve for, um, solving for the sides is actually one of the easier things because you don't have this ambiguous case happening here. All right, so I'm gonna slide on over to number four. Uh, start by drawing the picture. It's a little triangle here, let's see it snap. Okay, there it goes. So A, B, C. All right, the measure of C is 94 degrees. Little b is 23. Little c is 14. And we wanna know the measure of angle b. All right, set it up. This is law of sines. So the sine of little uh, angle b over 23 equals the sine of 94 over 14. So I'm going to have the sine of B is equal to 23 sine of 94 over 14, which means angle B is going to be the inverse sine of 23 sine 94 over 14. All right, into a new part of Desmos here. So functions, inverse sine, start a fraction, 23 sine 94 over 14. In Houston, we have a small problem. Uh, it's undefined. So this is the case where, um, this isn't a triangle. Yes, I know I started the problem by drawing a triangle, but the reality is, this doesn't work, okay? What really is happening, if I were to try to draw this, and I'm fabulous at it some days, so I know CB is here, and I know that this is a 94 degree angle. I know this is a 23, and I know that there is a 14 attached to here. The problem is, basically what happens with this case is no matter what we do with this 14, it can't reach side CB. It just, it doesn't create a triangle. And so what you're going to have is it will give you undefined for Desmos. Uh, calculate 84 if you're in it, I believe will tell you you have a domain error, which again, it's the same idea. Double check that you're not in radian mode. Um, but yeah, this is, you can set up the problem, but you're not gonna get an actual answer for it because this actually isn't a triangle. So be aware that there are three cases for law of signs, okay? So case number one, you have, I'm gonna actually get rid of Desmos here for a moment. Okay, case number one, you have the ambiguous case. You have the possibility of two different triangles, and so you have two answers. Case number two, you have one triangle with one answer. And then case number three is the information you were given doesn't even make a triangle, okay? But don't worry about trying to figure out if you have that triangle or not from the beginning. Just set it up, try and solve it like you would any other law of science problem. If it works, great. If you get an error message, you probably don't have a triangle to start with. So I know that is a lot of information on law of signs. Like I said, the other parts of this problem, this worksheet, I will put up in a key so you'll see which ones fit which case. If you have any questions or any concerns about this, please let me know. Message me in Canvas, send me an email message, or let me 